the 90s. And in this particular space of words, I say a bunch of things that draw a glorious nostalgic image of 10 years of poor pant decisions. Most of the 90s were like an 80s expansion pack. Let's be honest, the best thing that came out of the 90s besides the birth of some of you were the video games and how they helped mold the decade. God damn it, video game arcades were still alive. That being said, here are my top five video games of the 90s. There aren't many good Dracula stories out there, especially since Twihards with their Twi moms went and ruined vampires for everybody. But 1997's Castlevania Symphony of the Night doesn't follow Dracula. It follows his dyslexic Danfer's son Alucard's adventures as he runs through his daddy's massive monster mask castle, breaking shit in defiance. Why Symphony of the Night? I'm gonna drop something on you so you can pick up what I'm putting down. I'm talking about a non-linear, critically acclaimed, incredibly influential cult classic 2D single-player side-scroller that gracefully sauntered into a developing age of 3D realms as an underdog to be realized as one of the greatest video games of all time with a lesson to teach about daddy issues and unconditional love. Until you've seen a mass of heathens screaming and clawing at each other in front of a Mortal Kombat machine, you're missing a big chunk of video game culture roots. Before home consoles took off, people had to go outside and transition to video game arcades, germ-infested, social watering holes of competitive quarter-munching aggression. And in 1993, Mortal Kombat 2 fueled the bloodthirst. MK2 hit the sticks, piggybacking off of the much-deserved success of the original Mortal Kombat while riding a wave of glorious perpetual controversy with the sequel they up the ante. New higher resolution characters, better game mechanics, more alities than you could shake an impaled stick at, blah blah blah. I'm not a salesman. All I'm trying to say is that shit was dope and it had people going disco bonkers on several different layers. I fucking loved it. They say some things are best left as memories and Final Fantasy VII is one of those things because you'll never recapture the magic. Your heart won't race like the first time that train pulled up and Cloud jumped off of it or the first time you saw a summon. You won't fall as hard as you did for Tifa and that was weird, she's not even real. Your heart won't skip a beat the way it did when Sephiroth did that sick crazy dope atomic drop running his mass immune blade completely through Eris' torso, killing her instantly. Spoilers! I'm not even scratching at the surface of the individual character depth or development that unfolds as you go through this beautifully soundtrack long ass RPG adventure. People loved it so much they've been begging for a remake for years. Ain't happening. 1997 is gone. You got a feature length, fully CG film eight years after the game came out. Pretty sure that's as good as it's gonna get. Some things are best left as memories. Final Fantasy VII will be remembered as one of the greatest games of all time. And the day before there were seriously entirely too many Super Mario anything games, there came a revolutionary beast called Super Mario 64, and that bitch was unstoppable. Video game magazines across the privileged world was giving this super bastard, if not perfect, then damn near perfect scores across the board. It took platform gaming, turned it on its ear, and then tore open its third eye. With the level of influence it was emitting on the industry in 1996, it could have started a cult and had every everybody drinking the Kool-Aid. Mario 64 was big and innovative with a familiar face and a lot to explore. The music and the sound design on point. Graphics so good Nintendo ran them into the ground and maybe the 3D camera did suck, but it must be hard because tons of companies still can't get it right. The game sold millions of consoles and copies, held a place next to Final Fantasy VII and the Smithsonian. We get it, stop with the Super Mario games already. Jeez. True story, one time my neighbor before I met him screamed, Hideo Kojima is the greatest video game director of all time. I have no clue why or who he was talking to. But that's the kind of non-normal that playing Metal Gear Solid makes people do. I don't know what alien technology Hideo used in 1998, but the game got in people's heads. They didn't want to put it down. Some claimed they couldn't. They started calling it the father of stealth games, whispering words like perfect, a near cinematic experience with all striking character design. Perfect holds an official world record for innovative use of a video game controller. Perfect, the soundtrack brought me to literal tears. Perfect, 
one of the most influential games of all time and to think it almost came out on the 3DO, that would have sucked. Like literally, 94% of you just said, what the fuck is a 3DO? Exactly, right place, right time, Metal Gear Solid. Presenting 3DO, the most advanced home gaming system in the universe. It's time to put away your toys. I know there are games you firmly believe should be on this list, so hit me on Twitter at Flitz, and in the comments below, I do read and reply where I can. As you can imagine, it's pretty damn hard to pick five games from 10 years of amazing gaming gems. So, I'm gonna think the honorable mentions really loud, and now you can't get my voice out of your head. Thanks for watching. That was a cool retro top five there from Flitz. I too myself did a retro top five when I talked about the best Game Boy games ever. Watch that. Also, hey, did you know over at Geek and Sundry I was on a show called Spell Slingers? Click here to watch it. I play magic and it's awesome. <laughs>